So current Teslas like the Model S, X, and 3 have been built of batteries that look kind of like this. This is an 18650 cell. It's a cylindrical cell and a Tesla battery pack is built of thousands of these. And in the case of the Model 3, they're 2170, a little bit bigger, but again, cylindrical. But Tesla has all but confirmed that they're going to be doing something that probably nobody thought they would and go with a prismatic battery cell in their Model 3s in China. So that's what we're talking about today. I wanna to talk about the chemistry, what goes into it, the battery shape and size, and what all this means and if this is a good thing or a bad thing and just break it all down. But as always, before we begin, thank you so much for watching. If you're new, consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss our future videos. We are a channel dedicated to the future of technology, energy, and transportation. I'm Ricky, and this is Tuba DaVinci. So first and foremost, this has not been confirmed by Tesla. This is still kind of like breaking news and a couple of different outlets have reported things like Reuters. I'll put links in the description to the article that I'm talking about. But the idea is that Tesla is moving away from their strategy, which has always been to use these cylindrical cells in favor of going with a prismatic kind of a battery. So the prismatic cell isn't wrapped in layers like the cylindrical cell. Instead, it looks like a little rectangular brick and the layers are laid up and the resulting size is much larger than the cylindrical cell. So as a result, you have less bigger battery cells that make up a battery pack. Companies like BMW use the prismatic cell in the i3. And until now, Tesla has never done this. So first of all, Tesla is partnering with a Chinese battery manufacturing company called CATL. They are a big time battery manufacturer. And I think that the LFP battery chemistry in this prismatic cell size is something that CATL has in large quantities. So first of all, Tesla needs to have batteries in line for the kinds of mass production numbers they wanna hit. So I think what they're thinking is, if we go with this huge company CATL who can make this battery at a very good price with a different chemistry and a different size and configuration, then we can sell our standard range, the shorter range Model 3s in China at a lower price. The reports that I've been reading have cited reductions in price as much as 25% for the batteries. So that's a big consideration, especially if you want to keep healthy profit margins for a lower price car in a Chinese market. From a business standpoint, that all makes sense. So even in China for the longer range Model 3s, they're going to work with LG Chem on NMC batteries or nickel manganese cobalt batteries in an 811 formulation. What that means is it'll be eight eight parts nickel to one part manganese and one part cobalt. So Tesla's battery packs have been reducing their reliance on cobalt for years now. Cobalt is the most expensive and the most unsustainable element in the battery supply chain. And in the 811 configuration, I think their numbers are gonna be close to around 3% cobalt. Um, and they will continue to use LG Chem and NMC configurations for their longer range cars in the cylindrical size. But for the short range models, they're going to go with CATL. The prismatic battery has one downfall, which is it kind of has to be built to size. So depending on how much room you have, how tall they can be, how wide they should be, how many of them can fit comfortably, you kind of have to have them custom built. But for a car that's gonna be mass produced in huge numbers like the Model 3, the prismatic cell that they're gonna use from CATL will be custom tailored for the Model 3. They're not off the shelf from something else. So the price reductions aren't gonna be a function of the fact that they're widely available and just mass produced. But for CATL to use the LFP chemistry, we'll get to that in a second, in the prismatic cell means that they can make batteries at a cheaper cost, around 25% cheaper than what Tesla can do with their standard NCA configuration of cylindrical cells. And the reason why is batteries have a defined limit of how much current can be drawn, either discharged or charged back into them. So as a result, with Tesla's standard performance models having thousands of cells, like over 4,000 cells, that means that a little bit of current from 4,000 batteries results in a lot of current. And the same goes for regenerative braking as well. Tesla's cars with the regenerative braking set to aggressive have the regenerative braking feel of pretty much brakes. I mean, they slow you down a lot. And that's because you can put a lot of that power individually 
less current, but into a larger number of batteries. With prismatic batteries, you don't quite have that same benefit. The, the voltage that'll, that can be drawn from each cell is going to be higher than it would be in a cylindrical, but the other consideration there is heat. Now, prismatic batteries are rectangular, which means they can fit very nicely side by side. And so from a volume perspective, they're way more efficient than cylindrical. But you can't just stack them up and not consider cooling because you're going to have to have some sort of cooling of some kind. I'm curious how Tesla is going to accomplish this. With their cylindrical cells, they actually have a cooling ribbon that runs and uh, we'll put a little animation that I made previously that runs the liquid cooling loop and it actually cools the batteries incredibly well. That's what allows the Model 3s to charge at the superchargers at 250 kilowatts. You have to keep the batteries cool when they are performance driven and also when they're regeneratively braked or when they are charged at DC fast chargers. And so prismatic batteries will have the same limitations and they'll have to be engineered and cooled um, in accordance with how much heat they'll produce. So there's a lot of pros and cons to the pouch prismatic cell configuration um, and the cylindrical cell as well. So for example, the cylindrical cell has less battery, if you will, per cell, and it needs a aluminum casing. So there's a lot of extra weight that isn't actually being used for the battery, but they handle expanding and shrinking under charging and discharging much better. And so as a result, that doesn't have to be factoring as much. Whereas for prismatic batteries, there's extra hardware that has to go into accommodating for this expansion and contraction during charging and discharging. Um, so there's a lot of pros and cons, but really I think mostly it's a question of picking one or the other and having a plan and going with it. Because whatever you decide, the next key will be to mass produce them and manufacture them at a huge volume to bring costs down. Tesla has always used NCA or nickel cobalt aluminum in the past. Now they've gotten their cobalt percentage down to under 3%. So it's really largely a nickel aluminum battery, but there is some cobalt. And one of the things about this configuration is it has some of the best energy density. That's what allows these batteries to be um, such long range champs, but they are a little bit more dangerous. And so as a result, you have to have really sophisticated BMS battery management systems and really good cooling to keep those batteries at a healthy place. And that's where Tesla's tech in their battery configurations is just such an amazing feat of engineering. But in the case of this prismatic cell, um, they're going to use LFP and one of the really great benefits of LFP, which is lithium iron phosphate, the F comes from the periodic table, Fe, the, uh, the Latin name for iron. And this type of chemistry is nice for one reason. It's really abundant. Iron and phosphate are both pretty abundant and so is lithium. And so the battery overall is just easier from a parts and raw materials perspective. You don't have all of the pretty shady practices of cobalt mining happening in parts of Africa where the cobalt is most prevalent. So as a result, there's going to be cost savings there. One of the drawbacks is it's not as energy dense, so you're not going to have quite as much range for the same amount of, of, of mass of battery um, chemistry. But one positive thing is that it has really good cycle life. So the lithium iron phosphate batteries might potentially last even longer than Tesla's other NCA batteries, which can be kind of cool. But the bottom line here is there are some changes and trade-offs happening. And I think this should be expected because when we're talking about manufacturing millions of EVs, you're going to have to play ball with these different manufacturers. Now, the one thing to remember about these cars is even if the the chemistry changes or some different aspects of the cars change. The idea if you've built a good architecture is your chassis and the skateboard and the powertrain can handle all that. And I think that's where a lot of these companies are getting really good at standardizing that. So it might be that mid cycle, a couple of years from now, LFP falls out of fashion and there's a new chemistry. But if the prismatic battery itself is the same size or the cylindrical cell is the same size, that you could plug and play and it would keep working. So the bottom line here is Tesla has a plan to procure a huge number of batteries for their standard range Model 3s in China. The other cars, their other Model 3s in the US and other markets are not affected by this at all. And I think it's smart because CATL clearly has battery manufacturing capability. That's why Tesla has been talking to them for about a year now, it turns out. And what this means is if they now have a new vendor, a new, new supplier to supply all those batteries, then the Panasonic partnership 
whatever Tesla's working on internally, which they'll have more information about in the battery and powertrain investor day event that they'll have, they're going to probably have more batteries available for their other models. The Model Y is coming online. So if they can use more of their NCA Panasonic partnership cells or any of the other cylindrical cells that they have for the Model Y, that means that the Model 3 in China can use a different supplier and they can better spread out the load and the demand for batteries among their cars. This 50 kilowatt hour battery pack that we're talking about, I think let's say if we assume that it cost around $8,700 for Tesla to manufacture, we're talking about a price drop from $8,600 for the standard range 50 kilowatt hour battery pack down to 6,500. So that is another $2,000 right in Tesla's pocket as profit, especially if the profit margins otherwise are gonna be lower for that car in China. And I think they'll make up for it with volume, but now if they can have even more profit from their packs and everything else, it's a win-win. But I think the biggest win here, obviously profit margin is crucial and really, really important. They have to be able to make these cars in China, which is a huge market, in huge volumes and make tons of money. But I also think it's a brilliant supply chain move because now they have a new manufacturer who makes batteries a different way, who can now come on board and make batteries for their cars. From a logistics perspective, there's probably a little bit of a challenge now because before every Model 3 was the same and parts and SKUs and you know interchangeability was pretty common. But now you're gonna have these Model 3s with a different battery pack from this vendor and you'll have all the others with this pack the BMS might be different, the software might be different, uh, the cooling solutions are gonna be different. So you kind of have a divergence, which until now Tesla's had a really clean product line. They just have one model, they have one, you know, but now they're gonna have to deal with the logistics and the supply chain problems that'll arise from this. But if everything goes their way, they now have a lead on tons of new batteries for their Chinese standard range Model 3s, and that'll allow them to make them in huge volumes continue to make the Model 3 long range in China using the old cylindrical batteries and get Model Y online. Model Y is going to be absolutely huge. And I think this frees them up to keep making the cylindrical cells for the Model Y and all the while keep all these balls in the air. Tesla is going to have a huge year in 2020. They're going to probably, I predict, double the amount of cars that they sell and ship. And so as a result, they need double the number of batteries. So this is probably a good move in that way. Time will tell from a logistics perspective if it pays off or not, but this is pretty much the news. Again, this hasn't been confirmed by Tesla and my gut tells me they're not gonna 100% confirm this until the battery investor day, but this is what all the sources are saying. And again, we'll put all the articles in the description. And uh, what do you guys think? What do you, what's your take on all this? This is something that most people probably didn't see coming. And um, it's definitely kind of a shock but uh, I think it does make sense. I think they know what they're doing. They'll figure this out. But I'm curious what you guys think. Let us know in the comments what you think. Hit that thumbs up button or thumbs down if you didn't like this. Share the video with your friends. And if you really want to be a rock star supporter, consider supporting me on Patreon. We have plans to do some big things here in the next couple of weeks. We're going to go and do a lot of fun new shows, more of a documentary style. And your support on Patreon would make all that really that much more possible. So that pretty much wraps it up for me here with this um, pretty interesting news. I'm, I'm excited to learn more. I think this just makes Battery Investor Day all that much more exciting. There's going to be a lot that they're going to announce. So um, stay tuned for that. Hit subscribe, follow us. We'll cover it all as it happens. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Ricky, and this is Tuba DaVinci.